name's uh, Robert Keith. I was born in the famous golf uh, town of St Andrews. Uh, absolutely hopeless at golf. Uh, I gave it up uh, soon after starting. Um, I had two uncles who were deep sea fishermen and it was always my ambition to go to sea. I, I loved ships and I loved the sea. So if, probably from the age of 12, 13, I uh, joined my uncles uh, to go to the fishing in the, the North Sea, uh, South East Iceland, Faroe Islands. And when I was 15, and after studying uh, navigation at the uh, academy in Amsterdam, uh, I applied uh, to join Shell Tankers. So I was uh, accepted uh, after my uh, request, and in June 1965, uh, I joined my first ship in Liverpool. And that was a voyage uh, to begin with down to the West Indies, the island of Curacao, uh, Jamaica, um, Trinidad and Tobago, and then it was across to West Africa, and then back to Curacao again, and back to Liverpool. And that took three months. So I left the ship here in Liverpool again, and a few weeks later, joined my second shell tanker. And for the next 25 years, that was my life. And joining the Merchant Navy in 1965, we didn't need a passport, uh, we had the British Seaman's Guard, which was our passport, and that got you places your passport would never get you. So when you went abroad, uh, going through the airport, the immigration would just look at that and say, not a problem, carry on. So that's all that is. Life at sea was everything I expected it to be. Um, on days like this, when the sun's shining, when you're off for a couple of hours in the afternoon, it's either up on deck, sunbathing or in the swimming pool and chilling out with a, a few cold drinks. Um, and then getting into port, uh, my job towards the end there, I became a, a Caton officer when I was 23 years of age, um, probably the youngest Caton officer in, in the fleet. A seaman's discharge book. And this shows, uh, this is known back to 1965, considerably younger. And it's a history of all the ships we sailed on, where and when we joined the ship, in what capacity, um, what was the voyage, was it uh, foreign going or coastal, um, what was the behaviour on board, well it had to be very good every time, didn't it? Yes. and then signed by the master or myself. So this is the, the history of your seagoing career. When I joined Shell in 1965, under the British flag, uh, I'm sure we had about 120 uh, ships in the fleet. That was just under the British flag. Um, I sailed in different classes of ships. There were product carriers, which would be about uh, 18,000 tonnes, and they would carry various different cargoes in one go. Uh, these ships were uh, built so they had some 11 by 3, 33 tanks on board. So you can carry 33 different products. And you had to be, or the chief officer had to be very careful not to swing the wrong valve and mix one product with another product. Otherwise, you've got what was known as a, a cocktail, and everything had to be discharged. It, that cargo was finished. Then I, I worked on methane ships for a while, uh, travelling from Canvey Island and the Thames across to Arzu in North Africa. Uh, methane, very dangerous cargo, uh, so that you had to be very careful with that. And then I was asked to join the very large crude carriers, that's uh, tankers up to 210,000 tonnes. Bearing in mind, my first ship was 18,000 tonnes. I'm now sailing on a ship which is 210,000 tonnes. We then went on to 310,000 tonnes. And as the ships got bigger, the accommodation got better and better. It was like being in a five-star hotel. Absolutely fantastic. <coughs> I had uh, 25 years with Shell. And this book is the second book written <coughs> uh, to commemorate um, life at sea with Shell. So I, I've got an article in this one which involves this ship uh, when we lost an anchor. The entertainment on board, uh, we had um, our cinema um, and some of the more modern ships, we had uh, a small gymnasium. Uh, we had uh, entertainment nights where the, the crew would uh, get dressed up and do a soap opera, and we'd maybe do South Pacific or, or whatever. So it was all good fun. So we'd do a six-month uh, trip 
and then maybe three months at home, then another six months trip, three months at home. I didn't worry about <laughs> being at home. I just wanted to be at sea. I didn't worry about what money I was earning. I just wanted to be at sea. And that was how it was for most of us in those days. <laughs>